Today through this message I want to help people who are in addiction. Myself experiencing certain of them and uh, seeing God's grace in helping me to overcome and having a church where we see people who've been free. I want to share just few simple thoughts that will help you to get strengthened to receive freedom from God. And then we're going to pray against the spiritual forces behind addictions. And we're going to pray for the viewers who are watching us who have those addictions in Jesus' name. Can somebody say amen? If you have your notes, I want you to write down point number one. Stop dating Delilah. Stop dating Delilah. Now Delilah, I don't mean uh, that you, that particular girl. Delilah speaks of a woman in Samson's life that Samson asked, listen to this, he asked her to bind him. Delilah represents people in your life you like but you know you shouldn't be with. They trigger the sin in your life. It's the circles in your life that if you go that it, you feel so relaxed your guard is down and then they bring the alcohol and you know that for you that is a struggle. So you push yourself in a way where Delilah something you like but it's not something you should be around and then she binds you with ropes but because you tell yourself I can break them you keep breaking them breaking them but there will be a day when Delilah will bind you with the rope you will not be able to break. The Bible says he got up and said I will lose myself as before but the Lord left him. God's protection is on your life but that protection begins to lift when you step into the house of Delilah. When you step and you lay your head on the lap of Delilah. Many people will experience deliverance if they will only delete the numbers of people who are selling them drugs and inviting them to a places where they get buzzed. It's very spiritual. Just delete it. Just leave it alone. Because Delilah, she will put you on her lap. You will lose all kinds of discipline and then she will bind you. And that bondage is not the devil's fault. And the bondage is that you gave her your hands to bind you with. And you can cry there until you lose your voice for God to deliver you. But God can only deliver you from your enemies, not from your friends. When you make Delilah your friend, if you make her someone you flirt with, someone you play with, someone that you like, next thing that happens, you cannot have the audacity to ask God to deliver you from something you feed every single day. You have to hate it. You have to struggle with it. You have to fight it. You have to want to be free from that. Can somebody say amen? When Jesus spoke against the devil in the wilderness and he rebuked him, Jesus was in the wilderness speaks of separation and Jesus was fasting speaks of discipline and then he said devil get behind me see my power against the devil is congruent or consistent with how much separation do I have from the house of Delilah and how much discipline am I applying to my spiritual life see if my life is not disciplined if every single junk is on my phone, all kinds of music, all kinds of movies and all kinds of stuff, material, things that are constantly poisoning my soul and I'm putting myself in the way where there is bad people or people that are just I shouldn't be with, they're constantly tempting me to my old life and then I get up and say I rebuke you Satan. Satan is going to laugh. That's exactly what Delilah did. Delilah will laugh at you and the Satan is not going to be bound. Satan is going to bind you. When Jesus spoke against the devil, it's because he was fasting and he was in the wilderness. When Samson got up to fight the Philistines, it's because he was napping on her, on her lap and he was in the wrong house. That's why the Bible says, I'm going to go and fight them. See, he believed in charismatic deliverance. I'm going to go because I've done it before. And everything gets lost. He gets up and the Bible says he didn't know the Lord was not with him. It's not the form of rebuking the devil that empowers you. It's a lifestyle of discipline and separation from the world. Number two. Increase fire in your life. Increase fire in your life. So the second thing, increase fire in your life. Apostle Paul goes on the island of Malta and he says this, when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on fire, a viper, somebody say viper, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand. I want you to notice, as long as there was a little bit of fire, vipers were not coming out. 
when Paul increased, see Paul didn't like small fires. He always wanted big fires and God wants you to have that kind of a spirit inside of you. When you are complacent, you can be watching porn and feeling not convicted. When you are complacent, you can be drinking, smoking, listen, abusing people and feel no conviction at all and feel like you actually have no problem. And it's not because you don't have a problem. It's because the devil is comfortable in the temperature of your spiritual life. He's hiding there. You don't even aware of it. Increase the fire and you will quickly see vipers coming out. You will quickly sense a conviction. You will quickly look at the same action you were just doing a month before and say, oh my God, Holy Spirit is not pleased with that. But he was completely pleased when you had complacency and you had a little bit of fire. And after a while, when our life is complacent, the Bible says he, he throws, spits us out. He speaks to Christians. Your life without fire hides vipers. It hides demons. It's a dwelling place. You can be a Christian. Name it. Confess it. Jesus. Have a bumper sticker. Have a hungry generation mug in your house have a love let love lead sticker on the door of your house but if the temperature inside here is warm demons will stay there the moment you increase the fire just a little bit they begin to come out they begin to surface sometimes you begin to feel uncomfortable about certain behavior and certain action but the best part is increasing the fire not only exposes the power of the enemy it expels it paul threw the snake into the same fire that revealed the snake and that fire killed that snake see when you grow in christ you increase the fire in your life not only you begin to see where you need deliverance but with the help of god you will be experiencing deliverance by keep growing in christ can somebody say amen can somebody say amen, amen. increase god's presence in your life you don't just need to have somebody to come and bring the fire on you build it put logs if you are struggling with something right now I'm going to give you a secret. Don't focus on being free. Focus on being filled. Focus. Paul wasn't looking for a snake. He wasn't going on a snake hunt. He looked for logs. The more logs he put, the more fire he had. And the more fire he had, the more snakes were killed. Even if that snake bit you and it's fast, that means it's holding on to you. Listen, by having an increased presence of God in your life, morning prayers, regular fasting, regular Bible reading, not just watching all kinds of funny and hilarious fails on YouTube but watching sermons, watching TB Joshua, John Chi, watching Joel Osteen and watching all of these anointed men of God, watching Joseph Prince, watching things on grace. When you begin to kind of watch testimonies from CBN, next thing that happens is that snake that's holding on to you, the fire is getting stronger, stronger, stronger and you will begin to see your life will change. Not because you went on a witch hunt but because you went increasing the flame inside of your heart. The Bible says you know the truth and the truth will set you free. That means as you grow in the knowledge of God, you become more free. Amen. I always like to use the story of how little chick chickens are born. A little chicken is inside of the egg and as the hen sits on the eggs, the little chicken gets stronger inside, stronger inside, stronger inside. Until the little chicken is so big that the shell is a tight space for her. See sometimes when you're just beginning your walk with God, you can still be cussing, you can still be doing this and you honestly feel completely fine with it. Somebody tells you, you're like, I don't feel convicted. But until you grow, you grow, you grow and you begin to feel that that very behavior is no longer fitting for your spiritual life. And then comes a point when the mother chicken, she doesn't break the egg. She keeps sitting on the egg until the chicken inside gets so big that the bigness of the chicken no longer is fitting for the size of the shell and she snaps and breaks the shell. That's exactly how many of us experience freedom. We begin to grow and grow and grow until the shell around our life that seems to hold us hostage and we cry out to God to break it and God says, I'm not going to break it. I'm going to be with you and help you to grow and you will snap that out of your life by growing in Jesus Christ. Can somebody say amen? It all started when I was around the age of four or five and I got taken care of by a friend and there it was I got molested by someone and from there I know the spirit of lesbianism got introduced. Ever since then, I knew things weren't the same. It was all different. I started noticing girls more around in middle school 
I would notice them a lot more. Guys were no interest to me. In high school, I started dating. I started talking. It was a normal lifestyle for me to be liking girls. And from there, things got a little bit worse, or a lot worse. I was, uh, I would party a lot. I would drink alcohol. Every chance I had, I would take it. I was always, most of the time at night, I would be depressed. I would have a lot of anxiety. And to the point that I just wanted to end my life. I got to a point where I went and I got some pills and I was just ready to just take them and be like, this can be the end of it because I didn't know what purpose I had in my life. But something told me that there was more to it. There was more to my life. And from there, I got a Facebook notification and I got invited to the track for Apostle John Chi conference. That's where my deliverance started. At first, I was not very sure about it. I was scared. I was nervous. I wasn't sure if I should it was the right thing to do because I was not very familiar with it. There, when Apostle John Chi, I was going through prayer line, he started praying for me. I was not giving myself fully to God. I was not being free to him and telling him, you know, give it all. So, it, um, but that's where I knew that I needed to change my life. At the end of that night, I knew I had to start doing a change. I knew that the only way to be able to free of all of this, the depression, anxiety was if I just give my all to God and just be free. Then it, they continued, Apostle John Chi came to Hungry Jen, and that's how I got, a friend introduced me to the church. And she told me about this. And I came and I just let it go. I told God, you know, here I am, take me all. I don't wanna be living with this anymore. Cause it was just a constant thing that I was just tired of. And it was, it was ruining my life. And I got delivered and it, once he delivered me, once I was, it was just the end, I felt a lot more lighter, like everything felt, I felt so much peace. Words really can't describe how it felt, but it felt so much more peace. I knew then that I had a purpose and I, I knew there was much more to life than what I had. Girls were not the same to me. Depression, anxiety wasn't a problem anymore. Social media, I would cut it off, that was affecting me in that way. It was just not the same because I knew who I belonged to and I know, I knew what was my purpose and what's my destination. I did not expect this change, but I knew it was for the better. My name is Giovanna Hernandez and this is my testimony.